the topic of consolidation is something that's kind of, you know, near and dear to my heart because, you know, I've implemented, sold and demoed consolidation solutions for 12 years, you know, prior to coming to Anaplan and then subsequently to Axolytics. And based on my experience, I've always have an opinion on, you know, whether Anaplan can do consolidation. It's always been a, a topic of discussion. So let's go through it. So, you know, the topic of today's session is consolidation and ad plan, myth or fact, right? So you draw your own conclusions based on what you're going to see today. Here's a look at our panel. And again, as myself, I'm a former ad planner. uh, And again, uh, have been involved with consolidation for, you know, 12 years of my my 20 plus uh, year career. Let's get a couple of definitions out of the way so aggregation versus consolidation what is what is the difference because you'll often hear the terms being used interchangeably and i guess from a you know from a layman's point of view it's it you know generally okay but if you if you start breaking it down and start getting under the covers and the details they're actually quite different so what is aggregation? Aggregation is really the ability of a solution to add data up through hierarchies and across dimensions to get to a basically an aggregate view. So if you think about accounts, time periods, entities, currency, uh, you know, um, you know, potentially products, seeing being able to see a report or a grid that shows, you know let's say total net income for all entities in a particular currency, that would be your aggregate view, but it isn't necessarily a consolidated view. When we talk about consolidation, it's really significantly, like from an academic point of view and from an industry practitioner point of view, it's really aggregation significantly enhanced, right? So to consolidate, you really have to be able to do certain activities which would be comprised of things like foreign currency translation, intercompany eliminations, journal entry adjustments, be able to account for entities that are, you know, that aren't necessarily 100% owned and require uh, special accounting treatment, whether it be minority interest accounting or perhaps equity pickup and and so on or proportionate. The ability to collect supplementary information that is required for the consolidation process. The ability to prepare financial statements, income statement, balance sheet, cash flow, but also things like disclosures, right? Management discussion analysis and other sections of if you consider, you know, a 10K, 10Q type of type of report. The ability to perform things like account reconciliation, as well as meeting internal, various internal and external reporting requirements, the ability to onboard new acquisitions and account for them correctly especially when that acquisition occurs and you have to report on it pretty much immediately. Also, the ability to open it up to auditors for them to review and sign off on the results. And then being able to kind of take that next step, which is taking your consolidated numbers and then generating a tax provision, whether that be a you know current provision or some kind of current and deferred provision, as well as a uh, potentially a interim provision for things like tax forecasting and planning. So you can see there's a lot of other activities that are typically involved in the close process. And I think there's no question in the Anaplan ecosystem that Anaplan can do aggregations, right? But there's always been this lingering question of whether Anaplan can actually do consolidation. So let's dive into it. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to walk you through a sample demo model that will showcase the consolidation process within the Anaplan platform. So basically what you can start off with looking at sort of the status of your closed process. And again, I'm going to hit the highlights. This is generally a much longer demo uh, with a lot of discussion, typically interjected. Uh, But I'll hit the highlights for you. And then I'm going to open it up to some questions. And again, Anaplan supports both a decentralized and a centralized closed process. And the the difference between those two is in a decentralized process, you're going to have like regional controllers around, uh, you know, uh, dispersed whether they be within you know, a specific country or around the world. And they're typically the ones who are responsible for kind of closing their divisions books, if you will. 
as part of like a overall like sub consolidation and then they ultimately roll up to the full consolidation so you can understand kind of where people are in the process so both from a centralized point of view and from a decentralized point of view and you can see right now on this particular dashboard we have you know the uk is you know is an entity that hasn't really started their closed process yet so they're kind of lagging behind some other things to, to be mindful of is you know, what does it mean to be in and out of balance? So you can set those tolerances within Anaplan as well, uh, just by, deter you know, setting those setting those parameters and having that applied throughout the closed process. So right now, from an intercompany matching point of view, you know, anything within a dollar is considered to be balanced. And from a trial balance, balancing point of view, anything within $10 is considered to be balanced. And again, you can set your own parameters uh, around that. You know, there are some closed preparation activities typically that occur. Uh, where you're, you know, you're importing or priming the system with the latest foreign exchange rates, whether that be from, you know, a simple approach as a as an Excel template that's kind of circulated around the the finance team. Here's our current exchange rates for the period, or you can gather it from, uh, you know, from uh, from external sources like exchange rate sites and so on. And so, you know, you're you're updating your foreign exchange rates within within Anaplan. You're also updating your ownership register within Anaplan. So who owns whom and whether any new investments, uh, any new acquisitions, et cetera, all that can be captured with what we call the ownership register. But once you've got sort of primed the system kind of for that, for the current period close by doing those preparatory steps, you're now able to kind of start, start the actual close process. So let's dive in a little bit deeper and take a look at the specific checklist that we would need to do to go through the close process. And, you know, as a, as a, as a new accountant coming on board, you know, help close the books for various companies and in different industries over my career. I was always wanting and you know, always needing to know kind of what those steps were. Now, typically there's a, there's a prescribed process, but there is, you know, subtle nuances between companies and industries and so on that they would consider to be part of their closed process, which would be different, right? So what you can do is take a body of work and break it down into a series of tasks. Here we have individual tasks so here's the things that we would i would you know we would need to do to close our books and you can see that right now the first thing we need to do is import our import our source data from the from the erp system so now we're going to go into our next step here and we're going to actually going to import data into um into anaplan so the way a typical anaplan uh for consolidation deployment would work is it would uh, connect to your erp system and bring in bring in that that trial balance level information now you can also synchronize with your metadata as well but and that generally occurs when you have like a single chart of accounts uh you know single erp but if you have as many organizations do like multiple erps and over time you've acquired and you've acquired different source systems and so on what anaplan can do is serve as your consolidating chart of accounts your consolidating set of entities and what you do is have a mapping process from those disparate ledgers into Anaplan and to, to basically have that consolidating view, if you will. So whether you have one, a single ERP and a single chart of accounts, or whether you have many ERPs and many charts of accounts, that's okay. Anaplan can uh, can handle that. So what we're going to do now is we're going to go ahead and import data. And right now you can see that we're, you know, our process hasn't started. So what we're going to do is we're going to import data from the data hub. And so we're bringing in that, uh, that, tr that trial balance level of information. And what you can see here is that we actually have a, um, an error in our process. And, and really, you know, that error has been detected by Anaplan and determined to be a mapping error. So data validation is also an important step of part of your closed process, because what you want to do is make sure that the data coming in from your ERP or ERPs is actually tied, tied, you know, uh, ticked and tied against the control totals, uh, you know, in, uh, fr from the ERP in, uh, in Anaplan. Uh, so Anaplan's detected that there's a there's a mapping error, and as you can see right now, that we actually have an imbalance, right? So there's a check that that occurs where we're checking revenue and expense and assets and liabilities, and and seeing how those compare. And right now we've we've got an imbalance. So how would we go about solving this particular mapping issue? Well, the first thing we can do is just what we'll do is we'll go into um, into our mappings, and you can see right now on this dashboard that Anaplan has parked this exception in a in a dashboard. So what you can do as part of your role in the closed process is have like a daily dashboard that you're looking at because a lot of times these load these loading processes are fully scheduled and automated right you don't you don't see them you don't get involved in them they just happen and the other thing too is they might happen 
you know, uh, over, over a period of days, right? So one of the key, one of the requests we often get is, you know, can Anaplan track daily over daily changes in our load process? Because if you look at the kind of frequency of activity, the first few days of the month are like a, you know, a, a beehive of activity, right? Where you're loading and reloading and loading and reloading and correcting and reloading and so on. Um, Anaplan can track all those loads separately and be able to give you uh, that comparison, so you can understand day over day what's changed. So that's another thing, and and again, that daily dashboard can also give you those exceptions, right? Because when the loads happen automatically, you can be informed by Anaplan of things that that didn't load and the reasons why. And you can see right now we have one exception here. If we go ahead and uh, sort of cruise through our account our, our account list, you know, and and scroll through some references down below, we can see that we have you know we've got like an account fifty. Here, you can see there's way too many zeros on this one, but that looks pretty close. So let's go ahead and select and make that one material cost. So we've actually been able to come to correct this mapping directly within Anaplan. Now you can go back to the ledger and reload if you want, but you can make those corrections actually in your consolidation system. And one of the things I've found too in my experience is that the consolidation solution is a lot more agile and nimble than the ERP system because the ERPs typically will close on a specific day and and that's it and any kind of last minute adjustments that you might have to make to your numbers yeah you need to do them somewhere and the consolidation solution is is where they're being done the advantage of anaplan is that when you make any kind of changes you can see there are exceptions have now been cleared our differences now is now uh nothing it does all this in memory so uh it applies the data validation checks it applies the foreign currency translation it does the intercompany eliminations it does any kind of you know automated like calculated journal entries if you will where you know you've got a bonus accrual that's based on a sliding scale of attainment that can also be done in Anaplan in memory and the actual consolidation itself is also done immediately in memory so really what you have is basically an automated touch to bring that data in and Anaplan performs all the downstream consolidation activities automatically in memory and you can immediately move to reviewing the consolidated results and that's the advantage of having an in-memory engine like Anaplan and let me throw a, a few more complex cases at you right what if you have to ex change an exchange rate midstream and you've already imported your numbers what if you have to change an ownership percentage midstream and you've already imported your numbers do you have to kick everybody out of the system and rerun a batch consolidation process uh, as a result of doing that. In Anaplan, no. You make the exchange rate change, you make the ownership change, Anaplan then ripple applies that change all the way through the entire consolidation process in memory, and you're immediately in a reconsolidated state without having to do that. Other products aren't so fortunate. So let's continue on. And you'll also notice too that at the top is the ability to indicate you know, if I want to consolidate. So while Anaplan does all those close activities in memory in real time, you can actually have a switch within Anaplan that allows you to control that dynamic consolidation. And right now I'm not done my numbers, so I don't want to be part of, I don't want to be consolidated at this point to the top of the house, which might be viewable by corporate, et cetera. So you can actually control that in memory capability and decide when you want to invoke that as part of your closed process. So now what we'll do is we'll move on to the next step in the process. So we've cleared our mappings. Uh, let's move into uh, roll forward schedules, which is again, is, a, is part of this supplementary data collection that often needs to be done more, more so on like a quarterly and year end process, not necessarily on a, year, on a monthly process on a monthly basis. But as you can see here that I've got a fixed asset roll forward schedule that allows me to segment you know, my ending balance into beginning additions, disposals, transfers, write off CTA, et cetera. You can have all that in here and you can have these manual data collection schedules. So for furniture and fixtures, maybe I've got 10,000 of additions, 5,000 of disposals, and maybe, you know, 5,000 of, uh, of transfers and maybe another 5,000 of write offs. And now, as you can see, what's happened is Anaplan has you know, taking that roll forward schedule and and basically segmented that into separate buckets so that I have a full audit trail of, of adjustments or changes that have been made uh, to my numbers. So I can immediately see here's my beginning balance that came in from the ERP. Here's journal entries that have been layer, layered on, which we'll talk, talk about in a minute. And then here's specific adjustments that I've made based on my roll forward schedule that then results in my ending balance. So you can kind of break that out. And the other thing too, from a foreign currency point of view, all of these can have different exchange rates because you know it's critical, especially when you look at getting the balance sheet right from a translation point of view, your beginning balance has to be at like a legacy exchange rate, which is typically a, a blended rate that has 
occurred that has uh, changed over time. Your additions and disposals and transfers and write-offs are all current period activity, which then are translated at the current rate. And then what you end up having is a historical rate for the beginning balance, current rate for the current period movements, and then you end up with a blended rate for your asset balance, your ending balance, which then automatically rolls forward to the next period and then is applied, applied accordingly. So Anaplan's got that financial intelligence built in. Uh, then if we take a look at journal entries, again, just hitting the highlights, and I'm going to probably stop in a, in a few minutes, uh, but just wanted to kind of give you give you those highlights. But here we have the ability to book journal entries in Anaplan. So in this case here, we have the uh, we have a an entry for which is a, a prior period adjustment. We also have another entry which is for a, a accrue, accruing a payroll. So we have a couple of journal entries here that we actually want to post in Anaplan. So let's go ahead and, and first of all do the journal entry to accrue payroll. So what we're going to do is you can see here that we have our, our debits and credits, uh, our grid on the right, and I can select you know any type you know any kind of account that I want to post this to just by clicking into the cell. And if I make this you know fifty five thousand, let's say. Um, this journal entry is no longer balanced. It's considered a financial entry and as a result has to be balanced, which means I wouldn't be able to post it unless it actually met the criteria for being a, a, a balanced journal. So Anaplan is able to kind of validate that in real time. You can put in comments. You can also attach links to supporting documents to support the entry. Uh, but now let's go ahead and we'll just go ahead and we'll, uh, we'll submit this entry for review. You'll notice as I do that, I can't make any further changes to this entry because I basically locked myself out. So there's a data integrity and, pro and, and, and process integrity that's being applied here by, by Anaplan. And I'm going to go ahead and do the same for a prior period. What's interesting about prior period entries in, is you can do them in Anaplan. You can actually book an entry to a closed period, whereas in the ERP, you wouldn't necessarily need to be able to and, or be able to. And as a result, in Anaplan, you can post that entry to the current period as a prior period adjustment, or you can post it to a to the prior period. And you'll notice that there are different types of journal entries that are uh, be, that can be done in Anaplan, including things like current period adjustments, recurring entries, reversing entries, etc. And I often get the question of, well, you know, the ledger's closed. We got to book a last minute adjustment. How do we do it? Well, in Anaplan, what you can do is book that as a reversing entry. So you book it in the current period, it automatically reverses next period. And then when the ledger catches up and you re-import, you've got your consolidation solution and your and your ledger uh, in sync. And recurring entries are those, those same like, you know, tens or hundreds of entries that are done every period, but the amounts change. So Anaplan, you have the ability to tag those entries as recurring entries. They automatically post in the current period and then roll forward to the next period. You can make your make your adjustments to those and then repost them. But in this case, I'm just going to keep this as a, as a current period entry. I'm going to go ahead and submit this. And now as a contributor, my role is done. And, and also, too, from a security point of view, in Anaplan, you can separate the role of the creator from that of the of the approver and poster. So the, the, the creator can only create the entry. It's up to the reviewer now to review each entry and decide, okay, these look, you know, these look good. So I'm going to go ahead and approve, approve these entries. And I'm also going to make them eligible for, for posting. So I want to, you know, I want to post these. And in Adaplan as well, you can do things like temporary postings where you can post your results, see the, see the impact on the financials, and then undo that post if you want to, without having to actually book a reversing entry to reverse, you know, to reverse what you just did, because that just leads to a stacking of redundant entries. So in Anaplan now we've got we've got these entries approved. So we can go ahead and now post these. So now we've gone through our posting process. Those have now com been completely uh, posted, and we can move on to the next step in the process. Now, just wanted to leave a bit of time for questions. Just a few more things I wanted to touch on, including the ability to do things. Uh, you know, the ability to look at things from a from from, from an adjustment point of view. So I'm just going to go ahead and select uh, select the UK entity here, and I'll select pound sterling. And basically, what you what you're able to basically separate is you're able to separate your numbers into different buckets, which is important for tracing and transparency and auditability. Where you can have, again, as I pointed out before, that's that starting balance and being able to look at, you know, of that starting balance, how much is made up of local adjustments, maybe adjustments to different sets of books as well, like local stat, gap, and even tax adjustments, you can have all that with an Anaplan. And so you can have like multiple sets of books adherent to different reporting standards and actually have a set of reports. You just toggle between those standards and they update automatically as a result of that. So the ability to separate things into separate buckets is a key requirement. And Anaplan, Anaplan uh, handles that very nicely through its lists, you know, the ability to have like an unlimited number of lists capability. 
Okay. Uh, and the other thing I'll touch on is one of the things that's considered very painful um, is intercompany matching. So Anaplan has this as well, where essentially what you're able to do is is balance your trading partners and their intercompany activity together and understand whether there's any balances in terms of the matching. In this case, you'll notice that I have a clear a clear table here, and that's because we've set our threshold at you know a dollar, and we have some differences at like twenty five cents, ten cents, fifteen cents. So these would be the intercompany would be considered matched. But if I went back uh, to my you know to that original sort of dashboard and I changed this tolerance to zero. And now we go back to our intercompany matching report. You'll see that we now have some numbers that are populated here because we didn't meet the matching, we didn't meet the threshold, the criteria threshold. So, and you can see that Anaplan is matching trading partner for trading partner, the reported amount, the counterparty or the trading partner reported amount, and whether there's any differences. So Anaplan provides full intercompany matching. And then finally, from a consolidation point of view, if we move into our financial reporting and take a look at our consolidating financials, what you'll see here is that the UK, you know, we've got we've got you know several entities around the world that are all rolling up, intercompany activity being eliminated at the top of the house. Now you can have sub consolidations as well, where you have a North America a limbs, you've got a MIA limbs, APAC a limbs, etc. You can have those different levels of elimination. And what's great about Anaplan is that it has intelligent hierarchy interpretation capabilities, which means that if you do a reorganization or, or, or book a transaction between intercompany transaction between trading partners, Anaplan will seek out the parent where those two trading partners meet ultimately and eliminate at the at where at the elimination entity that it makes sense. And again, the way we're doing eliminations here is we're doing eliminations through an, from elimination entity point of view. And what we're doing is we're importing the, the uh, trial balance numbers, but we're also in, importing the intercompany do tos and do from. So the intercompany transactions are coming into Anaplan, and that's what Anaplan uses to then perform the eliminations that then get booked to the elimination entity. If I bring the UK in now, what you'll see is that the UK numbers are now in and fully consolidated up to the top of the house. One thing I did want to point out, though, is if you take a look at the intercompany elimination entity, what you see is if I bring the UK in, those numbers change because UK's intercompany activity and eliminations are now being brought in as well. And now we're in a fully consolidated state. The other thing I'll point out is that you have full account reconciliation capability within an, within Anaplan as well, where essentially what you're able to do is, is balance off, for instance, cash as an example, right? Bring in your company's bank statements that has the, the individual transactions, bring in your, your trial balance numbers and have Anaplan basically tick and tie and basically eliminate everything that mat everything that's uh, matches or reconciles and leave you with the exception. In this case, I've got a two thousand dollar exception. In this case, now you know what I'll do is I'll put this in as a you know a check in transit, and you can even have a link uh, to that to that check as well or to that item as well. Uh, but as you can see, if I, I've eliminated my you know my reconciling my reconciling items. And um, and now we've got basically, and as you can see, as I as I change things, Anaplan's kind of doing that dynamic checking, right? But I've got my reconciling items, and I've now and I've now done this. And again, you can reconcile all those big ticket items with Anaplan. But that is just a quick overview of Anaplan's, you know, consolidation capabilities. And I now look at, like to open it up for questions. Thanks, Mark. We do have a few there for you. So this one says. Um, they don't believe Anaplan is on the Gartner's Magic Quadrant for consolidation. Do you know why that might be? Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at Anaplan as a company, it invested and marketed and developed its product from a pur pure from a planning point of view. So all the investment and all the marketing for Anaplan has really been along the, the, the planning discipline, if you will. But, you know, what's interesting about that, though, is that all the work that they've done and, their, and all the continuous work that they do on the planning side also benefits the consolidation side. So the only reason you're not seeing Anaplan on Gartner's Magic Quadrant for consolidation is because all of its investment and attention and focus has traditionally been on planning, but you're actually going to see that change because they made an announcement in February at their um, annual kickoff meeting that they're actually going to be pursuing consolidation. Awesome. So stay, so stay tuned. <laughs> The next question, do you have any references for consolidation doing this in Anaplan? Yes. As a matter of fact, uh, Axolytics as a, as a company actually has a client that is currently in parallel testing 
uh, for consolidation. They actually selected Anaplan for consolidation uh, and a couple of other use cases as well. So yes, we have a, we currently have a customer um, that is currently in parallel testing, uh, and they'll be referenceable, uh, you know, af after that to, after they go live. Uh, Anaplan also has a number of clients that are actually using Anaplan for consolidation as well. So there are some references there. Great. Next question: Does Anaplan do the last mile of the closing process? Yeah, so let's define what the last mile is, right? And and what you've kind of seen up to this point is kind of like that preparatory stage. Then you've kind of got that sprint in the middle, and then you've got that last mile of the marathon, right? And the last mile is really defined as the financial statement you know, reporting and disclosures and you know, XBRL tagging if needed, and any kind of like external reporting requirements that might be needed. And so Anaplan does perform the last mile of a close process in partnership with Workiva. Okay. All right. We have a few more. Uh, I know we're, we have a couple more minutes. So is what we've seen today out of the box or is this a custom solution? Yeah. So what you've seen is an example of an implementation template that Anaplan's partners can bring to their clients who are looking for Anaplan for consolidation. So this can be deployed as a as an implementation template that then can be tweaked or modified to the nuances of your specific close process. Uh, and the other thing too is, you know, if we talk about myths and facts, out of the box is is really a myth. And the reason why is because a lot of point solutions out there will will claim to be out of the box, but ultimately what you find is that inevitably they have to be adjusted to, to your specific hierarchies, your data requirements, and specific nuances of your close process. So there is going to be some inevitable customization that occurs because they're not coming with a standard set of your hierarchies for accounts and entities and so on. Uh, so inevitably, those point solutions are going to have to be tweaked and in some cases may even result in, depending on your needs, like changes to the core product, which in Anaplan is not the case. We have two more. So why would you choose Anaplan for consolidation versus maybe another platform that specializes in this? Yep. So, and generally what you'll find is when you're seeking consolidation solutions, you're going to find two types. You're going to find one that's like a point solution that kind of does this and only this, and it's coming with a prescribed set of functionality, um, which you may or may not be able to use. Anaplan is a platform play, which means that it is a platform. It is not a point solution which means that it can be implemented for consolidation. It can be implemented for planning, budgeting, and forecasting across, and also across a myriad of use cases. And if you think about having one solution for consolidation, one solution for planning, one solution for supply chain, one solution for workforce planning, one solution for sales, what you've got is a different, you, you're adding to your technology stack. And when we're talking to you know, the C-level these days, it's all about trying to simplify that technology stack, rationalize that technology stack. And so Anaplan allows you to simplify and rationalize your technology stack because you have one platform that can handle all of these different use cases. Awesome. Last question we have here. Is there an ideal client type or industry that's better suited um, for Anaplan for consolidation? Yeah, I mean, Anaplan is really industry and client agnostic, which means that it can be utilized across any, any industry you know, any any type of, you know, space that you're in. What I will say, though, is that existing clients of Anaplan should really take a hard look at, at you know, at Anaplan for its consolidation needs because they've already done the work. They've already got the investment in place, which means that the data hub can be reused for consolidation. And so really, it's you're really plugging Anaplan into the consolidation use case where Anaplan is already, already in place. So I would encourage existing clients of Anaplan to take a hard look at Anaplan for consolidation and really get more out of their Anaplan investment by leveraging Anaplan for consolidation. Okay, so thank you so much, Mark. Um, we appreciate all the knowledge you brought to us today. We hope you enjoyed this panel session. Be sure to check out more in our series. And if you're interested, be sure to hit subscribe and like so you can be the first to know about our next upload.